Hello, welcome to the Friday, February 7th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storms on us Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday I talked about the Android updates, in particular CVE 2020 Cerser 22. This was the vulnerability that was critical on Android 8 and 9, not on Android 10. I noted that Google's advisory was a little bit vague, that it really just talked about data transmissions that could trigger this vulnerability. Didn't really specify a lot uh, what kind of data transmissions could be used. Now, we have a little bit more detail now from the incinerator uh, blog, and it talks that, well, the vector here is Bluetooth. Not enough uh, details here in this blog to really tell us uh, what the vulnerability is all about. So that'll probably take reverse engineering some of uh, the patches, but they do state that on Android 8 and 9, a remote attacker could trigger this vulnerability could execute arbitrary code without any user interaction as long as, first of all, Bluetooth is enabled and the attacker knows the MAC address of the Bluetooth device. The easiest way, of course, to protect yourself is just to turn off Bluetooth, but Bluetooth has become sort of one of those very critical features in many mobile devices with headphones and such, of course, requiring that you are using it. It helps a bit if your device is not discoverable and uh, most devices are not discoverable by default unless you're sort of within the Bluetooth uh, scanning uh, menu. Now, uh, this helps with uh, keeping the Mac uh, more hidden, but uh, as the blog post points out on some phones, well, the Bluetooth Mac is related to the Wi-Fi Mac. Uh, so once you know the Wi-Fi Mac, which of course is more difficult uh, to hide, you may be able to then guess the Bluetooth Mac. If you're a creative professional, if you like to draw with your computer, you may be familiar with Wacom tablets, uh, these essentially large touch pads with special pens that allow you to get a very nice fine grained control over mouse movements. And well, if you're familiar with these devices, you probably like Robert Heaton, wouldn't really worry too much about the privacy implications of such a device. But what he did is he actually read the privacy policy and was surprised that the device used Google Analytics. Overall, you wouldn't really expect a device like this to sort of even interact with the network at all. Turns out that Wacom tablets, whenever you open an application, will report what application you opened and when you opened it back to Google Analytics, including a unique string identifying the user. It's not just uh, sort of unexpected for many users, uh, but also has some real sort of privacy implications if you think about that you're reporting back exactly what applications you're using, whether or not you actually use the tablet with those particular applications. You just happen to have the driver for the tablet running at the time. So good reason to read your privacy statements and probably another good reason to use systems like, uh, for example, a pie hole or such in order to block some of the requests to systems like Google Analytics. And security company Cyber Reason has a write-up about malware that uses Bitbucket in order to deliver additional components. Overall, I don't think uh, really anybody should be surprised by that. I see GitHub, for example, regularly being used in order to deliver malicious components. A lot of crypto coin miners are directly downloaded from GitHub. Also, of course, uh, Pastebin and systems like this have always uh, been used in this capacity. So no real surprise that Bitbucket is also being used to deliver malware. Of course, with all of these systems, whether it's GitHub, Bitbucket, Pastebin, because of their dual use, there are a lot of business application, business uses for these sites. It makes it quite difficult to then filter malicious content. 
And if you are using Realtex HD audio drivers on Windows, you may want to patch because they do suffer from an insecure DLL preloading vulnerability that could be used to execute code. Overall, this isn't sort of a super serious vulnerability. What's a little bit disappointing is that there is a lot of different guidance on which exact versions of the driver are vulnerable and whether or not there's actually a patch available. So I guess patch, if you can find a patch and hope for the best. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday.